But I think at the start, actually, you made a very good point. And I, feeding back profit into, instead of using ROAS, feeding profit back in, and flipping the switch to max, maximize uh, conversion value. Because unless your store's simple and your ROAS, your profit's your profit. You know, if you single category product or whatever. But for most people, I think profit does ebb and flow. So I think that's a cool little hack, actually to maybe go max conversion for that period and you know that your ROAS is actually your profit, your profitable return on ad spend, not just your revenue. Um, so you can be more aggressive with that. In fact, we probably should be doing that anyway. Yeah, boy, we could get into a whole topic there with about ways of optimizing toward profit because um, tracking profit is varying levels of hard for different organizations for different kinds of reasons. Um, there are technical components to it. There are also, you know, you know, the simplest route is to, is to custom label by margin and split out and set a, a row as target based on that and maybe push it a bit harder. I don't think there's a simple way of doing it, but I think it's an, it's a nice aggressive strategy in a, in a hot period. If it will be a hot period, but as you just alluded to black Friday and the sales, uh, periods might actually be cooling off. So, sorry, I've got all these like charts tiled on top of each other. Like what we're definitely seeing is that early season interest in Black Friday is getting more and more every year. So Black Friday, it is, it's becoming less of, of an acute kind of a peak. I mean, it still is, but it, but it's, uh, it, it's kind of that peak is losing prominence relative to the early season interest. Um, and if you look at like, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's an interesting topic, um, but I just wanted to, to mention this, that the, the prominence we see from 2019 to 2021, there's, there's been a big increase in, in the early season prominence around Black Friday. So it's something to be aware of. See, I thought it was a cheesy tactic because we suggested this years ago to run a, a pre-Black Friday sale. Uh, particularly to existing customers and stuff like that. But actually that trend data might show that it's not a cheesy strategy after all. People are gearing up and ready for an offer, so deliver it to them, even if it's a week or two early. You might be able to snag cash that would have gone out somewhere else and when it gets more competitive. But I, I think most retailers have cottoned on to that and pressure does rise well in advance. I know one of the luxury retailers we deal with they're advertising a month in advance. They might not be mentioning Black Friday, but it's very much geared towards building up to it. So yeah. they're not the only ones. Um, um, for, for, for sure. And I mean, if I, I mean, I was at the, I don't know if this was yesterday or the day before, but I was at the, the local grocery store here in Austria and there were gingerbread cookies on the register end cap already. It's August. You know, you always hear about the seasonal creep moving early and earlier. And I don't know if this was a purchasing or merchandising mistake or something, but that to me is getting pretty extreme. Yeah, I got some Easter eggs on, out as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, uh, it, yeah. Well, as long as we're not hearing Christmas carols yet, um, I think we'll be okay, maybe. 